code explains says hi. Today we're going to talk about a must know array method, which is filter. First, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Well, let's talk about a case where you need to use filter. So you have here an array of numbers, 9, 1, 8, 2, and 5, and then you want to filter out just the numbers that are greater than 5. So what do you want to do? You don't want to change your numbers array. So you don't want to go and remove, for example, those that are less than five. So you need to go and create another array. For example, I'm going to call it resolve. And then you want to go through your numbers array and then do a test whether a number is greater than five or not. So I'm going to go, for example, for nine. So nine is greater than five. This evaluates to true. So I'm going to save it or to push it into my result array. Then I'm going to go to the next one and it doesn't satisfy the condition. So I'm not going to push it to my result. I'm going to go to the next one. This one here, eight, satisfies the condition because this evaluates to true. And I'm going to push it to the result array. Then I'm going to go to two. It doesn't satisfy the condition. Five also doesn't satisfy the condition. And that's how you can filter out an array. And now let's go and see how we can filter an array with a full loop. And then we can go and use the filter method. Well, I need now to go and create my array numbers, then create my result array. And then I'm going to set it to an empty array here. Then I'm going to use a full loop. I want to start from nine. So I'm going to set I equals zero. And then to stop the loop, I'm going to use I less than numbers dot length. Now, because I need to do a test, I need to use an if statement and then check whether numbers within the XI, which is going to be nine, then one, then eight, then two, then five. So I'm going to check if numbers within the XI is greater than five. If this evaluates to true, then I'm going to push this number here into my result array using the push method. So if we run this code here and then console log result, so what will happen, numbers with index zero is gonna be nine. Nine is greater than five, so this is true. So this code will run. So we're going to push nine into our result array. So we're gonna see nine. Then we're going to increment i by one, i plus plus. So the index now is gonna be one. Numbers with index one is gonna be one. One is not greater than five, so we're not gonna run this code here. And then we increment i by one again. So now it's numbers with index two, which is eight. So eight is greater than five again. This is true. So we're gonna run this code here and we're going to push eight to the result array. And then two and five, it doesn't satisfy this condition here. So I'm not gonna see two and five in my result array. So this is how you can filter an array using a for loop. Well, let's see how we can filter it using the filter method. So for the syntax, you wanna call filter on your array. In our case, numbers is the array. And then you want to pass in a function. And this function will do the test with that before, just like this one here. We'll do this test here to check whether a number is greater than five or not, whether a number satisfies the condition or not. The function will return true for some numbers and those numbers will be saved in an array. For the numbers that this function returns false, they're not gonna be saved into our array. And now because I'm passing a function here to another function, because filter here is just another function, you can see the parentheses here. So this function here is called a callback function. Now let's talk about the callback function. So to create a function, you need to use uh, the keyword function. And then you want to call your function any name, as long as it's not a reserved name. Now for the parameters that filter will pass to your name when it's called on your array element are the value, which is the element itself, for example, 91825, and then its index, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then the array itself. So if we call filter on numbers, the third parameter here will be numbers. So why do you need to use the third parameter here, the array? Because sometimes you don't have access from within your function here to numbers because numbers doesn't exist in the scope of your function. 
Well, now inside your function here, what you need to do is do any logic you want. If there is any, you can do any calculations here, but at the end, you must return a condition. And this condition here will evaluate to false or true. Again, if it evaluates to true, we're going to push or filter, we're going to save that element inside a new array. So filter is not going to change your original array. When this condition here evaluates to false, then filter is not going to save that value into the array. And now let's go and try to filter our numbers array with the filter method. So I'm going to go and create my array numbers. Then I'm going to create a function. I'm going to call it greater than five because I want to filter just the numbers that are greater than five. Now the parameters are going to be passed by filter to my function are three. The first one is the value, the element itself, and then it's index and then the array itself. The array filter was called upon. So because I don't need the index in the array inside my function here, I can just go and remove both of them. But remember, if you want the array, for example, if you still need to use the array, you can't just go and use the array only in the parentheses here. You still need to provide the value first, then the index, and then the array. Then you can use the array inside your function. Well, I'm just going to go and use value and then I'm going to return the condition and the condition is going to be the same one we used here. So we're going to check if the number is greater than five or not. So I'm just going to go and return a value greater than five. I think I should have called this value here number and then return number greater than five. That's going to make a lot of sense. Well, you can call it whatever you want. So now all I need to do is create my result variable and then call filter on my array numbers and then I'm going to pass in my function here, the callback function. And now if I, and now if I console log the result, it's going to be an array that has nine and eight, the same result we got with the for loop here, except this code here is more readable. So you will have a hard time to understand what's going on here, or you will need some time to fully understand what's going on here. But here, all you need to do is filter numbers that are greater than five. And that makes sense. And you can uh, understand right away what's going on. Now, if you don't want to use a function, if you don't want to create a function and then pass that as a callback function, you can use an inline function. So you can just call filter and then right away use your anonymous function. So in our case, we're going to call filter and then I'm going to use my anonymous function. Then the first parameter is going to be the value and then I'm going to return my condition value greater than five. And then this will filter the numbers that are greater than five. Well, you can also use an array function instead of an ordinary function. So I'm going here to use an array function. The first parameter again is going to be the value and I'm going to return value greater than five and I'm going to get the same results again. Well, if you are familiar with the array function, you know that when your array function, all it does is re just returning a value. So you don't have any code before the return statement. You can just go and remove the curly braces and then also remove the return keyword. So this code here will look like now after removing the curly braces and the return keyword. So I'm going to use the arrow here. Then I'm going to use the value here without the parentheses. So with the arrow function, when you use just one uh, parameter, you can just get rid of the parentheses also. And now we're going to get rid of the curly braces and the return. And that leaves us with just value greater than five. And of course they will turn the same results. So I'm just going to see nine and eight in my array result. Now you can see here that instead of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven lines of code, we now achieve the same result with just two lines of code. And now sometimes when you're using the filter method, when you pass the function, you forget to return a condition at the end. And when you do that, when you pass in a function without returning a condition, that will result in getting an empty array. Now let's do a recap for our filter method. So now we've seen that the filter can take in a callback function. Also your filter can take in an inline function where the first parameter is the element. The second is the index. And the last one is the array you called filter upon. 
Now the last parameter we're going to talk about is the second parameter you can pass in to your filter beside the callback function and it's called the this argument. Well if you don't know well if you don't know about the this keyword in JavaScript, this is referring to an object. So for example, when you create an object in JavaScript and you use this inside that object, this refers to that object. So instead of using the name of that object to, for example, get to a property, you can just use this dot dot property. So now let's see an example here. So when you use filter and then you want to use this inside your function here, Whenever you use this inside the function, this will always refer to the global object. Well, because now I'm running this code inside a web browser, this here will be referring to the global object, which is the window object. So in my console, if I console log the this keyword, I'm going to get window four times. And that's because filter will go and run this function or call the function on 9, then 1, then 8, then 5. So we're going to see window uh, the console logged four times. Well, for any reason, whenever you want to change the object that this refers to, when you use the filter method, all you need to do is to pass in that object or that value as the second parameter to the filter method. Now, if I run this code here again, now this will refer to the object. So in the console, I'm going to see object here or this object here, because now this is referring to this object here. And I think that's all you need to know about the filter method. Well, don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. See you in the next tutorial.